for the pivotal study, the work that we have um, for selecting the number of donors is based on uh, the statistical power. So in terms of statistical power, um, we have seen, of course, that the number of donors is um, is, is important, um, is crucial, and the, the more donors we have, the more improved power we have. Um, however, in terms of statistical power, again, the number of replicates did not appear to be very crucial. Um, so we have, um, we have um, seen, for example, that anything with, with having three or more replicates um, works in terms of performance. Um, this, I guess, is not the same as the uh, comment by Chuck before, uh, who was talking about uh, measuring variability, in which case having more applicants is better. Thank you, Elena. Would anybody else from the panel like to comment? Priyanka, maybe I can just add. Um, I believe that there was some work that was done uh, by Diane Padvin uh, with respect to are you better off increasing your number of donors or are you better off increasing the number of replicates per donor with respect to a pivotal study to give you more robust data. Uh, and I think that's what Elena was mentioning as well, that the general outcome is you really uh, want to base your sample size on the number of donors, uh, not necessarily increase the number of replicates. And that makes, makes sense, especially for highly variable products as well, um, since you probably have very correlated data within the subject. So you're not getting that much more information from multiple replicates as opposed to having different donors. Um, the one thing that I have not looked into, but perhaps an alternative method for identifying an N, uh, especially for products that tend to have very high variability, uh, may be to just use simulations. Um, so not necessarily rely on data from a, pivot, from a pilot study, especially if you do have very highly variable data, you may not be able to detect it in a pilot study. So often we have seen that when you estimate an SWR from a pilot study, you may not be properly estimating it if you have a very high variability. So you may want to just rely on simulations based on what you would expect sometimes um, an intersubject variability to be. Thank you, Pina. So, so I think what we heard from the panel was, uh, in general, the, uh, the approach for us has been to use the SWR values that we are observing for the reference product to calculate the number of donors that may be needed or should may be utilized for the pivotal study. However, there may be some room for research like Dr. D'Angelo just mentioned, where we may be able to uh, utilize some new research to identify alternate strategies in the future. Um, so, in, in the interest of time, one of the things that I would like to discuss next is we, we have um, discussed a lot about uh, we have discussed a lot about in the previous sessions about, you know, method validation, how important it is to keep your method parameters consistent between your method validation and pivotal studies, how important it is to optimize your sampling paradigm so you are able to adequately capture um, your entire profile perhaps, but we also know that there are some limitations. And of course, in Dr. Uh, in Mr. Lehman's presentation, we heard, we heard about some of those limitations associated with JMAX. So we would like to begin a discussion about what exactly is JMAX, because he of course showed us four different ways of calculating JMAX perhaps. So we would like to invite our statisticians to explain how, how is JMAX typically calculated? Should should individuals be using log transformed values or untransformed values for the analysis? And then, of course, we will get to the zero values in a moment. Um, so, Elena or Stella, if you would like to comment. 